Alcoholism is no respecter of persons. Scientific studies show that some have a genetic disposition and are more vulnerable, but under certain circumstances, all of us could probably become addicted, even as Christians. When it happens, it's a devastating pattern of behavior, personally and in all relationships. Take Paul and Sue, for example. I know them well. They're both Christians. In fact, Paul was a spiritual leader in my church. Sue serves in full-time ministry as my executive assistant. And then the unexpected happened. Paul became an alcoholic. I grew up in a uh, Christian family. Um, my father was a kind of a lay speaker, so alcohol was never an issue in our family. Uh, it didn't uh, have any bearing whatsoever. My first introduction to it was basically when I was in a um, business position. It was moderate drinking through the business world and very successful. And then all of a sudden I lost my job and I became isolated. I was embarrassed about it. And so I found that a good escape for me was to start drinking. And it got worse and it got worse. And all of a sudden I started losing relationships with my wife, with my family, and this just continued on and on. Having also grown up in a Christian home, I really didn't realize to what extent alcohol had become a problem to Paul. I had nothing to judge it by, and it was a while before I realized that he had a problem with it. As I continued to drink, I continued to deteriorate. I find myself lying. I would lie to my wife. I would lie to my pastor. I would lie to the counselors that I was involved in. And it didn't matter to me. Uh, one day I decided I would climb a ladder because I needed to fix a light bulb and I'd been drinking. And when I did, I fell off the ladder, landed on the carpet, ended up burning all my skin here. And I went to the hospital and they diagnosed immediately this was more than a burn or a cut. This was alcoholism. They could see the shakes. And the counselor there recommended that I needed to go to an alcohol rehabilitation center, which I did. I went for 90 days. When Paul left to go to the rehabilitation center, I was very encouraged and very hopeful that this was going to take care of his problem. He had been drinking heavily and had gone into some depression, which made things even worse. And I was hopeful that this was going to fix things. I had just gotten back from the 90 days at the rehabilitation center, and I came home and I thought, this is great, I am fixed. And I thought, well, I could probably have a drink then, and I did. I had one, and then it turned into many, and it started to deteriorate again, and it got worse and worse, until one day I got a letter from my wife. And basically it said, I can't live like this anymore, we are through, I'll get an apartment, I'll be with my grandkids. And the same day, I got an email from my grandson, and he basically had said, you're not the same man I used to know, Papa. You need help. Then one day, my uh, son-in-law had tried to come see me because he was afraid I was going to do something to myself because I had a gun in the house. And so the police came. After Paul came home from the rehabilitation center, things went well for about two months. I was hopeful, I was encouraged, and then they started to go downhill again. He started to drink. He thought he had been fixed and that he could handle it. But he started to lie. He lied about a job that he didn't have. He was lying to our pastor. He was lying to friends. Basically, what he said was he was not drinking again. I knew it was good that he had gone there and that it probably saved his life, but I wasn't very hopeful about the outcome. When I was down in Houston for my uh, the 90-day second time, uh, I knew it had to be serious. This was something that was going to affect my life in the future. And the Lord had given me an opportunity while I was down there to also get involved in some Bible study and some ministry down there and had an opportunity to talk to people. When I came home, um, it was... Certainly great. I was provided a job. I found a good job that I really enjoy. And also two wonderful ministries. One was through Celebrate Recovery 
an opportunity to share with young people and also through Recovery International, which is also another ministry to help people who are struggling with addictions. During the process, um, I so much appreciated and just pay tribute to my wife. Um, it was just an experience where it was like falling in love again and just coming back to being with her, restoring that relationship, obviously knowing what she had to go through. And it is a process. It is a process of regaining her trust and her admiration as well. When he returned that second time, I was still very angry and resentful. We had lost our home. Um, I had to move while he was gone. We had to work on rebuilding trust uh, after all the lying that he had done. And I still wasn't sure that this was going to work. But with God's grace, um, we are rebuilding our relationship, our relationship with our children, with our grandchildren. And after 47 years of marriage, I feel like God is honoring that. One of the things that has happened to me recently, which is really an encouragement to me, is this letter from my granddaughter. Dear Papa, I just want you to know how thankful I truly am to have a grandfather like you and how much I love you. You have my utmost respect and I can't really tell you what a hero and role model you are in my life. You show integrity, faithfulness, sacrifice, a servant's heart, and love to everyone. Those are qualities I see in you that I hope to one day marry. Papa, I have seen you change so much in the last couple years from a broken man to one who is rooted in the Father and ultimately his redemption and grace. It is my most favorite thing and is absolutely so beautiful. You depict Christ's character and I am so proud and honored to call you my grandfather. I love how Jesus is using you to change lives, especially other young men's lives for the kingdom. I love you more than you know, your granddaughter, Sarah. Thankfully, Paul and Sue are continuing to heal in all aspects of their lives and in their relationship with others. It was indeed a painful journey. To be honest, Sue had virtually given up hope, and so had I. However, God used various members of the body of Christ to help Paul face his addiction. And today, his marriage has been restored, which began with asking forgiveness. On pages 115 and 116 in the Thinking and Growing Together section, I suggest five questions for interaction and application. I'm confident you'll have a very fruitful discussion, though some of you may disagree with what I've shared in this chapter, and you may disagree with others in your group. We know that we can all agree on one very important thing. To become mature in Jesus Christ, we must be above reproach in all aspects of our Christian lives, which simply means we have a good reputation.